You're watching PTV. I'm Benji from Let's Go to the Park, and I want my PTV. You're watching PTV.
From the San Francisco Bay Area, it's time for PTV Live. And now, here are the stars of PTV Live. Arnie, Doug, Ben, and Sherry. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to PTV Live. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. Look at it. That thing is just exhausting. Oh, my God. You guys have no idea. <laughs> I'm Ben. I'm so Sherry. Bad. Yeah, it's uh, it was quite quite a bit. So <laughs> I had muscle fibers. I didn't know I had that hurt. Yeah. So, uh, but it's all worth it. Hello, Rob. Yeah, Rob. Oh. He we play the horn anytime Rob shows up in there. So anyway, yeah, that was me doing the compacting of the uh, bass rock. Well, I was compacting too. Yeah, Doug was using the tamper. That's really hard to We're do. We're installing. Mickey, we were having a giant hidden Mickey installed in our backyard. Yeah, that's far from a hidden Mickey. That's what I was gonna say. It's very <laughs> far from hidden. You're gonna be able He's to see it by twelve Earth. feet. Yeah, oh, yeah. yeah you get, you totally could see it from see it from Google Earth. The Google only Earth, thing, yeah. the only thing I have to say is that you have the ears pointed towards the back fence, which means Mickey's gonna look upside down. No, no, he will on Google Earth. Well, they Earth. come from it, but it will. It's but you could, what we want it to orientate. Yeah, because when you're in in the backyard, you want to see Mickey. If you're looking way. straight down, he's he's actually <laughs> correct. Yeah, Rob Rob's very correct. It is not hidden Mickey. It's apparent Mickey. Apparent Mickey is right. In your, oh, in and your... Richard is correct. You can see it from Uranus. <laughs> you can see it from Uranus. It's an in-your-face Mickey. Oh, it is. And we're, I'm even thinking about how I can like put surface lights to go light it up. So we're, we're oh, looking at that. So yeah, you're, it's gonna be really. Oh, well, you're you're over the top. I, I we found these like weird surface oh, lights my that. Gosh. I might want to. We might have it light up too. So at night, you see these three giant green circles. Yeah, they were at the Lowe's Depot. That was kind of cool. Uh, <laughs> you know what? I would say here it is. He says, "Is that a Zen Mickey garden?" In a way, it, it is. is. We actually have rocks on the side of the house where you could take a rake and start thinking and going all Zen on it. So uh, that would Not work. For me. That would give me the the jitters. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, it's um, it's been a lot of work, and this week we actually made a lot of progress. So uh, it's changed. Thursday night was fine. Friday morning, the backyard changed twice in the morning. The, the plans. The plans. The plans did. Oh. But yeah. we'll, we'll talk about that when we get to the backyard update. Ooh, we're okay. going to get rid of this. But we'll definitely but we'll be, do this. We'll be definitely talking about that. But Ben, how are you doing? Uh, don't tell me about your, your overworked. We don't need to hear it. That seems like every week you're overworked. I was just going to say I'm a little tired tonight. Um, yeah, we both are. Okay. There's We're, been a lot going there's, there's, on There's here. a lot at work and here at home that Scott, Sherry, and I just both mentally spent. Yeah. <laughs> we won't go into details. No, but we're just, physically I'm tired too. Yeah, from we're just, we're exhausted. Going to work in the morning and then I'm still working half days the rest of this week just so I can come home and take care of Tom. So make sure he doesn't do what he's not supposed to do. But he's doing very well. Let's outside of being stubborn about his care. So, look, there's a <laughs> for a friend. He thinks, do you think it's a copyright infringement to do Mickey Mouse in your backyard asking no. for a friend? No. If you're charging people to go into the backyard to look at it, then yes. No. <laughs> exactly. What it's I, called fair use. It's a whole thing. We're actually, it's a copyright when you end up profiting from it. But yeah, we're not, not. not going to profit from it. Not no, even, far. not even here. Not even here. So. Anyway, welcome to the show, everyone. It's been kind of a busy Monday. It has. Um, yeah, so it's kind of been like, eh. <laughs> but it was it was a lot of fun, you know, working the weekend. But I'll tell you, I woke up and I was yeah, so sore. I'm so right here. My my right shoulder here was just in pain and uh, doing a lot of living lifting of bricks and rock and sand. Not easy. It's still a big giant I, pile of rock in our front yard. I would say my right shoulder is in pain from doing a lot of work, but it was mostly just editing a video for this coming Thursday. <laughs> Mine was from lifting bins and vacuuming and 
Trying she's, to still crap. she's still organizing the Hobby Lobby of our house. Meaning that <laughs> you have too much crap. <laughs> yeah, indeed. It, it is, is a good workout. It is a good workout, Paul. But that didn't that doesn't mean that we didn't have an opportunity to watch a movie over the weekend either. But uh -huh. we'll get to that. Oh, we're not doing that? I'm sorry? We're not doing that? Oh, yeah, we oh. are. What? Not doing what? The homeworky thing? Oh, we are. Oh, we will get to it. Huh? What? what was that, Ben? We'll I said, it. of course we are going to do that. Okay. Oh. Uh, Lowe's Depot, is that a Dougism? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, I guess it, you is. Say it is. Because we, you're either oh. the other or they're both the same. No, they're not. Oh, no, they're not. No, we prefer one or the other, but we're not going to have a fighting match over it and fight in words. Like, no, I like this one better. No, I like this one better. Because there's uh, by the, the same, but they're not. Before we get started with our show, I want to do uh, a little thing about the PTV Village. So uh, the PTV Village this week is going to once again feature Fox Hollow in in there, but it's also going to feature Donna Jaworski and Pepper Tree Villa because all three channels are getting together. This is going to be an effort from Fox Hollow. They are raising funds for uh, No Kid Hungry, and they have a fundraiser going on in October. They, their goal is to raise $1,000 for No Kid Hungry, and they actually got a response in social media from No Kid Hungry. They're very excited about it. So oh, that's, oh, great. that's great. Yeah, so I'm excited about it too. Food insufficiency is um, a big that's deal. A deal. It really is. Working in a school, I, I see that. And, and working for the county that as I work, I see a lot of a lot of things like that. So it's near and dear to my heart. So well, yes. our state just passed a law or it just went in that they're going to start where K through 12, all food is free at school through the whole state of California. It was that way last year. But now it's like really enforced. Yeah. And so but that, the only but that, state. But see, that's a good thing. And it's a bad thing because the food that they serve is just garbage. Yeah. I'm sorry, but it's well, not. Yeah. But, well, but we're going to be helping uh, No Kid Left. No, no. No Kid Hungry. In October, so I believe it's around October 16th. So be paying attention. More detail will get you those details as they become available. But I just wanted to make sure that I highlighted that for Fox Hollow. So there you go, Todd. And Good for them. That's yeah, I, I'm excited about working with them on that. That's um, very exciting. And just one quick thing about the garden. He says uh, Lothar said that he thought he saw Michael J. Fox at the garden center yesterday, but it might not have been though. He had his back to the fuchsia. So. Uh, <laughs> Michael J. Fox not to and Benji isn't here to appreciate that neither <laughs> is Jim of more sunshine please so. as, she says, as she swills down sun I know <laughs> the food is terrible at school glug 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 coke <laughs> but uh you know why don't we go ahead and get started with a cocktail okay okay Okay, this one is called a banana farmer. Thank you. Oh, <laughs> a banana farmer. A banana farmer, and okay. it's gonna. Oh, wait, does that mean that there's a lot of rum involved because it's tropical? Yes, it's uh, it's got pineapple juice in it. It has a lot of stuff in it. Doug went to go get some crushed ice because this one is not shaken. I, it, you just stir it up, but you start by filling your glass partially with uh, crushed ice. So that's probably enough. There you go. Then we're going to start down the list. And this one, if you've never heard of 151 proof rum, this stuff is like lighter fluid. Well, they said medium. I, they, with rums, there's a zillion different rums. So some cocktails are made specifically for that type. 
Well, I didn't have Smith and Cross. It was like a medium light rum or however they described it. I was like, it's not going to happen. Yeah, exactly. But so we're going to start because Doug did some fresh squeezed lime. And I'm going to start with the half ounce of lime in that. So I'll just put that in. But then we're going to go with an ounce of the 151. Glug, glug. Did you hear the glug glug? Yeah. Yep. yep. 151 proof rum. That's Holy good. cow. Oozing. Don't get any lighter around that thing. Don't I know, exactly. Oozing, so I'm going to give Doug oozing, a napkin oozing. and a lid so that he can go ahead and start putting those things together. Next, we're going to do the light rum. Of course, that's this big bottle of Bacardi. We've had this bottle for probably three, four years. It takes a long time to go through this much alcohol. Yeah. So, <laughs> if we have more fantasies than anything. <laughs> Yeah. And we can't wait to thank someone that was so contributing. An, an ounce okay. of white rum. And it's just Bacardi. Then we go to the banana liqueur. Now this one, we've made uh, different amazing. drinks. This one gives a good banana flavor to any drink. It is uh, just a banana liqueur. And this one is also an ounce. So we'll go ahead and put that in. <laughs> Lothar says that if you run out of gas, hypothetically, you could actually put the 151 rum in your car. Yeah, I'm sure. It's got a lot of octane. But uh, yeah, this is uh, the creme de banana. and That's fantastic. Really good. A good whiff of banana there. This is one of those ingredients that I'd never heard of until I went to Club 33 for a drink once. And they made uh, an old-time cocktail. Throws and maskers. Throws and maskers. And they use this stuff called falernum. And, and that's what they have at Club 33, so I'm so like, we have to buy it. Where, isn't that the like the fake name that Phoebe used to use on Friends? <laughs> <laughs> Phalanges is what she used to use. So it's a half ounce of the Falernum. <laughs> and I've already put in the lime juice. Yeah, it doesn't sound very appetizing. I already put in the lime juice, and now I'm putting in an ounce Oh, pineapple very, juice. Flarenum is very common in tiki drinks. Oh, look at oh, pineapple juice. Look at what Richard said. When, when I when I visit, we'll clean off the drink cart. Oh, Whew. that would be quite the, that would a lot of juice there. Okay, so I put in an ounce of pineapple juice. I'll set that aside so that it's not spilled or anywhere near the stuff. Okay, there we go. And then. We use, uh, the recipe originally calls for Angostura bitters. I don't have Angostura, but I do have aromatic bitters from Fee Brothers. Same, 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 same feel. So you just put this in and it's just one dash. So there you go. One dash. And shaking. There we go. Stir it. But instead of shaking, I'm just going to stir this one up. It sounds really boozy to me. Yeah, there's a lot in this. So yeah, this Doug is... really wanted to try this one out, so I'm going to give him the yeah, sip on that one. I don't know. But you know what? I should have gotten these to you because who knows what was going on at our school once upon a time, but we were cleaning out a closet and ran into some of these. So, Doug, how is that banana farmer? He's going in for a second sip. That is incredible. This really? is pre the the recipe wow. Doug grabbed from the internet. Uh, what's it's, the website? It's kind of a. It's one of the things I'm following in the groups. It's kind of based on beach bun berries. Oh, uh, Don the Beachcomber, and it's a riff on one of them. Oh my god, it's so good. How does that work? It's very smooth Holy on cow. everything. There's no. That is smooth. You really get that burning. You get that banana, but you get the burn from Holy the 151 crap. proof rum. Wow. That is good stuff. This is <laughs> a banana farmer. And Richard will make one for you when you come for a visit. Yeah, Richard does not like you guys sharing a glass. And you need one of these in your drink. <laughs> a pineapple straw. I love it. That's Honeycomb. awesome. Like I say, I don't know what was going on at our school once upon a time, but these were found in the back of a closet. 
that we well, were cleaning out. Oh, good. Well, maybe we can use those in some of our cocktails. Wow. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Sherry. Well, every one... time I, we don't make a drink because I don't want to make and he finds all these weird drinks and I'm like, I want to try <laughs> it. This is the one I want to do. It's really good. Oh, there it goes. That's one that we it's will little, definitely be uh... burning. But... <laughs> of course, it's right, you would it's like right there. It. It's going through. It's loaded. It goes to my liver. Thank you, Richard. Then yeah. it goes down to my kidney. <laughs> I could actually feel the alcohol ooze. Man. <laughs> this is great. <laughs> That's a good one. So, yeah, definitely we'll be making this that one This is something again. that would probably they would have at Club 33. I know it's a f matter of fact. Paul, as a matter of fact, we are doing I craft tonight. See, I want to see Doug after he has two of those. <laughs> I drank. We were eating at Napa Rose. And our dinner was like three and a half hours. And we didn't sign up for the wine pairing that eats at the chef's table. They gave us wine anyway. And we're not talking each glass was just. We had four. Four. Yeah. Full glasses between both of us. Yeah, he had guys four glasses. That's out. I was so lit. I went on Soren over California. Like, wee! <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to puke. It was, and then and then we watched the fireworks that night. They were, they were so, so pretty, beautiful that night. That was the one time I was uh, very flammable and highly inebriated. Yeah, <laughs> because we didn't pay for any of the alcohol, and they're just like, "Here, try this. Keep going." Thank because you. Because we knew. It was, it was amazing. So, so yeah, I'll never forget. The one fifty one is definitely going to hit. I'm sure it's going to happen by the end of the show. So, uh, yeah, let's pay attention to that. We're going to have a lot of fun with that. But as long as we got a drink in our hands, now we can go ahead and review that movie from Hallmark. <laughs> Okay, I had to highlight this one. Kathy is saying right now, I'm thinking of Sheldon saying, ooh, grape juice that burns. Oh, I love it. Big Bang. I love Young <laughs> Love Sheldon. the Big Bang Theory. Young Sheldon I mean, is a great show. Hi, Jim. <laughs> oh, there's Jim. <laughs> oh, Can my God. Sunshine, it would be please. so much faster a few of those drinks. Yeah, yeah, he's yeah I would be. Okay, yeah. that's fine, Jim. Thank you for watching and really, yeah, glug, glug that drink. So uh, I will. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. But... With this drink in hand, we can go ahead and review Romance in Style, which we had been calling all weekend Ugly Betty Light. We have. i would never heard that until just now. We talked about that during the movie. Remember I said, oh, this is like Ugly Betty. Yeah. Yeah. You know what? A little bit it was. All I have to say, I gave it an eight. I liked it. I actually yeah. generally liked it. Yeah. I loved that it was just subtle they were not pushing too much they made it realistic relevant the chemistry i like how um the editor of the magazine she was a real you know b word <laughs> our devil wells prada but i thought she was perfect in it and she played b on five star christmas where everybody thought she was the critic and I thought it was just, it was an excellent movie. I mean, from Ooh, home. remember was, that Christmas film, The Bed and Breakfast, Ben? Yeah, yeah, we we really liked that movie, and that that particular woman was there. And Dark Husband and Haley Menfall Rob is nowhere. <laughs> okay. I have I have one. Question. I was generous. I have one question. Yes, did we watch the same movie? The fashion one. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it was good. I, I was entertained. Okay, you know what? I watched just snippets of it. And I watched enough snippets to know that I didn't. How can I put this? Being someone who's a little bit on the heavier side myself, I didn't like the fact that they were pushing that part of it. I thought body positivity was said every 34 seconds during the movie, and it was annoying. I would have liked to have seen it where they developed a relationship in spite of how she looked rather than making it about about the, 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 plus the issue. Size. Yeah. Yeah. See, my, my thing is that if you are going to be making a film 
about someone who is on the heavier side falling in love with a supposed uh, bachelor who's on a list of most eligible bachelors in town. Make it about that. Don't make it about the fact that you're pushing body positivity as an issue because it distracts from the actual story. For me, it did. Um, I mean, like I said, the snippets that I saw were enough to make me say, eh. I'd give All it, agrees with I'd you. Give it maybe a five or a six. I will also much. say this. The actress who played the lead needs to take acting lessons because her line delivery was terrible. She's actually from Grey's Anatomy. Mm -hmm. she well, if she's from Grey's Anatomy, then Grey's Anatomy... The woman is from Grey's Anatomy? Yes. Yeah, yeah, well, then she needs to take acting lessons. She does much better. I don't know what you guys yeah. saw, and yes, they were... It was a highly emphasized, but it, the story flowed along. It was what? fine because it was needed to be because there was a lot of it. I don't think it was completely ham-fisted. It was the emphasis of it, but I guess it's from the whole, we watched a lot of Project Runway when it was actually really good way back in the day, about 10 years ago. So it had a lot of that. Yeah. I actually, it was okay. I'm not saying it was good or spectacular, but it was better than what it is and yeah they're trying to bring in it but that was the point but like you guys were talking about it being ugly betty light i liked it better when it was done as as ugly betty and it was done much much better i liked ugly betty i remember that show its name is betty uh, as far as romance in style goes i gave it a best of five five gold crowns i just did not buy into it at all it was just, it was too much thrown in my face. I could not sit back and enjoy the story. I can say I was almost insulted by it. But really? Nicole wow. is saying that she misses the original uh, Project Runway. Oh, yeah. Way back, the, the real ones. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. We, we like that. But, but, but I mean, I, I could totally see it. Some people would be totally take it off. I just, for some reason, it did not bother me, yeah. and I get bothered by everything. Yeah. By the way, I want to just throw this in there. In case you happen to live in Livermore, California, we don't really push we don't do politics, politics around here, but I just want to uh, make sure that everyone understands that if you live in Livermore, California, vote Evan Branning for Livermore City Council. Thanks. Not Moira Rose for Town Council. Yeah, <laughs> so uh, yeah, Evan Branning for Livermore City Council. I don't know what he stands for, but I'm sure it's okay. <laughs> You're welcome, Nicole. Yeah. <laughs> have wineries, port wineries, a rodeo. Oh, and, and an awesome outlet. Than, and it's yeah, hotter awesome than hell there. A yeah, very they, awesome outlet center. Yeah. Yes, they do. They have an outlet center. They call it San Francisco. I don't know why. And it's hotter than hell there. Yeah. But other than that, it's a, it's a cool town. Yeah, it is. So anyway, but... So we watched it as we always do. We watched Hallmark Channel on the Friendly app, along with four of the other forty other channels. You can get it for one low monthly price. We pay on an annual subscription, so it's like getting two months for free. Mm -hmm. You too can do this as well. Take a look at this, and you will know how to subscribe to Friendly TV. You're watching PTV Live. We'll be right back. We use the Friendly TV app to watch Hallmark. And now we can watch Lifetime, History, a &E, and more. There are over 30 channels from which to choose. We can even add Hallmark movies now to our subscription. Plans start at just $6.99 a month with no commitments. Download the Friendly TV app today at try.friendlytv.com. You're watching PTV. The heart of YouTube. Yes, 
That is us. <laughs> okay. Funny. So we said that we would get to a backyard update. Oh, it's going to make my muscles hurt. <laughs> <laughs> it's true we don't have that much time to work during the week so we have to really push a lot during the weekend and unfortunately it's been getting really hot midday so we only have a few hours in the morning and maybe an hour or two at night if it's not too hot so what you're going to see here this actually happened tuesday last week after the patio had been poured this is our neighbor removing the form from the patio. Oh, nice. So, uh, yeah, he he did it really fast. Oh, <laughs> they pop right off. Yeah. Yeah, they do. And this is that release age. It is like powdered water. It is so fine. Look how windy it is that day. It was very windy on Tuesday, which is why I wanted you to see the uh, the weather station up there. And then there's the little arch. He's taking things out of the way. That brick is there as a size for stones that we're going to put there. And then he just lifted it off and all the forms are gone. And then he wow. just took everything with him and uh, see the dirt all there. Yeah, that's a lot of dirt. Now, poof, poof. You can see a lot. Yeah, that's not smoke. That's just Dust. And that's actually the release agent that they use for putting the uh, stamps down. If you didn't do that, the concrete would pull up and would look kind of funky. Well, it helps colorize it. And... Is he using a power washer for that? We're no, going to do that later. That's just a hose that he was using. We've got the power washer to do that uh, for later. And then <laughs> Richard, it's not a rerun. Re that was on Tuesday that he did that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was so dusty, Doug had to actually get out there with the hose and wash down windows and the side of the house to get rid of all that. <laughs> it oozed. It was everywhere. I'm be replacing that piece of wood. Yeah, that dust got everywhere. But he did that. He wiped down the uh, the grill as well. So, uh, yeah, see the grill there? He had to wash that so down. I started here. Oh, listen to this. And I followed this outline. Getting dizzy. I followed it, and then I curved it, and I went back there. This is Doug shaping. And what I did is I took about back right here. here, and I counted. We need that's one, two, three, four, and I went this whole way. You see how it all looks? We need sixty bricks. Sixty bricks. That is the outline for a metal circle that we were going to install. That got nixed. That got nixed, yeah. By Ooh. the time we went to go get it, we realized from the time that we started looking at it, the price had doubled on that material. So we thought, you know what? Oh. Too much money, not to mention, it was going to be a lot of work. So we simplified the yard. We went with these bricks. That's going to we be- We were all ghetto and put the bricks in a Corolla, if you could believe it. <laughs> we could have borrowed a truck, but we didn't want to go into another town and pick it up. Well, you do what you have to do. It was fine. Now, here's the the river rock. These guys watch our videos, if you can believe it. Doug was shaking because of all that dust that was there. <laughs> Did he get sick? No, he's okay. What? Perfect. And that guy there, he watches our channel. Okay. Perfect. He recognized Doug when he dropped off. Off the rock. I know you guys. Yeah. I just watched your video. Oh, no kidding. And then this is the base rock that we used for the base of our artificial grass. You'll see us. You, know, If you saw us earlier in the show, you saw me compacting using our compactor. Yeah. We were compacting that base rock so that it was two to three inches thick. I wish I was bewitched. I wiggle my nose and all that stuff just disappears. But no, we have to take a wheelbarrow. Load by load. Oh, you're and... making me nauseous. <laughs> so I'm glad to see you guys are wearing head protection. Let's oh. just say I've been losing weight by doing this backyard. <laughs> My clothes are starting to his shirts are yeah, his shirts are starting to get a little loose. And you see the pile of rock? By the way, that was one and a half cubic yards of Bates rock. And that's all right back there. 
Wow. Yeah. Did you guys wear masks while all that dust was happening? A lot of the time we did. <laughs> Richard says, I hate, I hate rocking, rocking a yard. yard. I know. Yeah, it's a lot of work. And then this was about the last load of that base rock. It was a lot of work. It took us a couple of hours to get that all in the back. That's not surprising. That's a We lot did of that work. Saturday morning. And by the time we were done with that, and then that's all that was left there. Just that river rock. And here's that, here's the last load. Doug is taking it off because it's all cleared now. And he's taking it to the backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Just like those old eight millimeter films you wave high. Yeah. But then we had to make sure that it was all spread out evenly. Like so glass. He and I got uh, rakes out like that. He had the landscaping rake, so that does a great job of with it. But uh, it got like, yeah. Here, start suckling on this. Yeah, you could have used artificial turf like the Brady Bunch. Yeah, we will, we, be. We will be. So that's the, the last of the rake that Doug is taking around the yard, just making sure that it's spread out as evenly as possible. And then that was a resting break. We realized it was getting too hot, so we stopped for the day. And then the next morning, we woke up and started this. This was Sunday morning. Uh, started at about 8 o'clock. Oh, and I'll bet the neighbors loved that. No, it was fine. You know, it was fine. Most of the neighbors have their air blowers and things going at about 7, 7.30. So, you know, I, I didn't hesitate. It's not like we're it. ever going to do this again and we make a habit of it. So I pounded it all down. Then Doug put some water on it. And it make, it gives it more of a firm surface. It gets more like concrete that way. In fact, that is the base that they put in the concrete. Mm -hmm. And Doug watched him, uh, Antonio was his name, yeah. build the frame and put the, the rock in. He watched him do it, and this is how he did it. Then you wet it down, and then you go back and you compact it again. Now, this was Sunday morning. We were out there... Quite some time one on Sunday. To one from eight to one. Yeah, we were up there. About five everything hours. was happening so all that natural. So there I am compacting. Doug's doing a lot of measuring to make sure that we've got everything exactly where we want it. With math. You yeah. mean where he wants it? No, well, where it has to go because I don't want a floating Mickey head. Yeah. He had to be put just right. Yeah, exactly. It had to be just right. <laughs> And so, see, there's Doug using the tamper in the back. We're going to be using that again in a couple I of weeks. I can't have so. high lows. I can't have whoop de doo whoop de doops or anything like that. No, it had to be smooth. And then here we are putting the 60 bricks in place. That's going to be a path of decomposed granite when it's all done. The other side will be the river rock that's there on the driveway. So that base rock will be covered by as much of that little light weed barrier. And then we use that. Oh, this stuff is That stuff is called Wonder Edge. This Wonder Edge is made specifically for uh, artificial turf. Uh, I'll show you a little bit of this piece that I have in my hand right here that I'm shaking. I'll show you it once we're done with the video. And uh, so we're getting the head in shape. There are the ears. Then we're measuring them out to get Mickey there as for our artificial lawn, it's, using I mean, we're talking. six inch nails <laughs> to like a base rock. It's going to look. And then using that to make sure that my were, guidelines. Yeah. Doug is all about guidelines, sight lines, making sure everything is just right. So there it is. And then we've got two. If anybody knows to do construction design, circles are like one of the worst things you can do it's they could get so hard to do. circles are hard in anything even with quilting if you do a circle it's different. oh I, it's but i want to point out something very oh. interesting the garden here on this side is very regimented very very harsh corners structured and then the other half of the yard is all circles and whimsy so uh it's kind of like it's kind of like a juxtaposition halfway through the yard but uh yeah so anyway that's... Now, will you be cutting those ears? Oh, yeah. We, yeah, have, not, no, we, we have not cut them yet. Yeah, we have to get okay. it just right. We just stopped because it got too hot. It, well, it got too hot, plus it was already in place. We just need to cut it. I want to really spend some time to make sure his ears are perfect. But they should be, and it has yeah. 
and we're going to attack it, and I'm going to get this adhesive, and then the grass lays on top, and it's one big gigantic piece. Richard, thank you very much. The thing about Mickey ears is that they are not perfect circles. They're well, a little oblong. They're a li that's what I mean. You have to get it just about oblong, and then they go inside so they don't float. It's I actually took the, the real, because I have access to all this vector graphic from the Walt Disney Company of the mouse ears they use in all the maps. So this yeah. is the circles of how they have it. I just blew it up to be a 10 by 12 feet. So that is an official-ish corporate mouse head yeah circles are absolutely horrid now Just, I, I wanted to show this stuff to you this is that wonder edge that we're going to be using is cool this stuff is really cool yeah so it's artificial grass that we're going to be putting back there and we lined the circle but all of mickey with this stuff you just but he tucks in you nail it in six inch nails into the you know they hold this in place but if you look at this there's a channel in there the lawn goes right into there underneath it it goes under so it and a so you, perfect finished line so you can do a rough cut yourself without without uh needing a professional to install it mm -hmm. you know you know that that uh looks like a track for a bart train yeah now is it pliable so that you can bend it or yeah look at this it, you can easily bend it see, well see how it bends came in fedex this huge nine foot box that was like really skinny so we're like oh i thought it was gonna be rolled up no these things are super stiff but we it, sat out in the backyard and talked, and we just kind of like was bending it and bending it and bending it, and it just kind of perfectly conformed into its circle. But it does look like preformed subway track. Yeah, yeah it does. It's really it cool. Does. It's made in America. It's this kind of bendy plastic, but it isn't. And it's we got it from Lake Forest, California. Yeah, down south, South Orange County. Okay. Do you know? Do you know what Lake Forest is? Yes, it's right by Irvine. I know exactly yeah. where it's at. But do you know, Lake Forest used to be El Toro. Yeah, it used to be El Toro, the uh, marine break base. Yeah. I know my OC. But well, I, I used to actually work in uh, Lake Forest Ura. for about six weeks. Yes, you did. And it was a terrible job. Horrible job. Yeah, horrible, I remember horrible. that all too well. But so that's that's the backyard update. As soon as the weather cools off a bit, we'll be able to work again at night. Tomorrow, the forecast is to be 105. So we won't be working tomorrow night in the backyard. 105? Yeah. It yeah. should be at, on the, the fringes of the Central Valley. But yeah, it's going to be a little. Oh, my gosh. Tomorrow's going to be that hot? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's going to be a hot one. So uh, anyway, it's it's kind of putting a, a damper on our. But I I need to work. It's two days, and I, I need a break. <laughs> two rough days, hard labor. That was uh that was a lot. So uh, yeah, it's definitely time to take a break on that. But yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing the end product myself. I didn't thought he was going to show so much. I want to like surprise. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like to see if I could. I might see it in my network. Someone who has a drone, because I want to do like a drone flyby and kind of see it and go, oh, I, I, this is so cool that I want to do a whole finely edited and then it kind of swarms around and then all of a sudden everything lit up and then it so it goes from day to night. So I got to figure out how I can access to a drone. But anyway, regarding what did we get this week? This is what arrived in the mail. Boring. So we were able to put it to use immediately. So uh, I didn't think we needed an entire section of what did Doug and Arnie get to talk about this. So uh, because yeah. it was part of the backyard update. And we went to Lowe's Depot so many times. All the people there were going like, hey, guys, oh, how it's doing? Devin, Jill, Brian, they've all been very nice and very helpful. <laughs> yeah. You're on a first name basis with them, huh? We sure are. Mm. Yeah, Jill's at the customer service counter. We've had to return a couple oh, of things. Will is another guy that's yeah. been very patient with us because we've been very... Have you been showing him pictures of the progress? Of course, yes, Mr. Chatty Cathy over I've, here. I've had it on my phone so I can show people what, what we're doing. But uh, yeah. yeah, so that's it for the backyard update. Um, ben, you're wearing a 407 shirt. That's interesting. Yes, I am. Yeah. <laughs> Richard yeah, says, this you can find this in Richard's store. Yeah, the Orlando uh, guy dot com. Where he permanently yeah. takes American Express. It is yeah, it's a very comfortable shirt. Yeah.
It is. Very it's soft. all about fit and fabric. Now, this one, yep. of course, it's Doug's signature of save the pine cones. Beefy tea. So or Gildan or whatever. You too can save the pine cones by going to our t-shirt shop and we'll tell you exactly how you can do that as well. You're watching PTV Live. We'll be right back. Pepper Tree Villa has a shop with unique designs for PTV. Lofi the Snowman is back in stock, and now there are new designs available. You can now help save the pine cones. Go to peppertreevilla.redbubble.com or download the Redbubble app and search for Pepper Tree Villa. Remember, your purchase helps support our channel. Please help Doug save the pine cones. Visit our Redbubble shop today. It is craft time with Sherry. Now, for those of you that were interested, I did post a picture on Instagram and it also fed through to Facebook. Gave you a list of all the supplies that were needed to do this particular craft, which is why it's a DIY uh, fall craft with Sherry. So if you are interested, I hope some of you may have taken advantage of it. If not, you can always take a look at that list on our social media and you can watch this video again and make that with Sherry. She'll walk you through step by step how to do this. Are you being a moldy oh, wreath? I'm being assaulted at my feet by this big ball of yarn. That's what? for an awfully what? big cat. <laughs> Is this the same one where you're going to make a moldy wreath? That moldy <laughs> gray? No, the this one's going to be. Wreath looks like this mold. One, yeah, this one's going to be gold. And then uh -huh. I'm going to show you an alternative for it too. But it's much easier. If you just roll some of it up to use, because otherwise you can't get the whole thing through. So I have a 12 inch, I have a 12 inch frame. And what I am going to do is put some hot glue. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm right. going to put booze away. <laughs> I'm going to do it right on the brace that's that runs across holding them both. So I'm just going to put, I'm just going to run some glue there. And you've got your, your finger protector. And then I'll take this and just lay it on top of the glue. And then hold it down until it. This looks like a lion's tail. Yeah, it does. <laughs> this yarn does until it holds. It's like Simba. Um, and Jean said, uh "Oh, the famous glue gun. No Ben using it this week. No. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely not. Yeah. So you just want it to hold in place. You can also tie it, but I don't like the knots in the back. I and think then that we need the the ribbon." I'm using one and a half inch ribbon. It's a pin. Yeah. It's a very, very long pin. That holds my okay. ribbon together. There's and all kinds of opportunity for injuries here. Okay. So once you get it started. It's like these crafts need to be supervised. Look Trust at me. that. That ball fits right through the center of that wreath. That's, that's, that, that's why Sherry made it a smaller. That's why I made it the smaller of, of yarn. Like rolled some of it off. So then I roll it through four I'm times. Four times? Yeah. So you've got four, uh, four loops through it. So that's two. And three. Three. And then four. 
Okay. Is this when you start using and the then ribbon this as well? Is where you're going to start using the ribbon. Gotcha. Okay. So what I'm going to do is put the yarn in my lap. <laughs> And the ribbon, it does not matter <laughs> if the edge is, you don't have to be perfect with it at this point. Let's put it that way. Because Jean says it looks like very heavy duty yarn. It is. It's the bulky, the bulkiest yarn you can get. So what I am going to do is put a little bit more glue right on the top. Yeah, yeah, you you do that. Sherry, what, Wendy's got a question. She says, is Sherry doing any dot painting now or has she? My mom is doing that right now for craft projects. But she dot, hasn't even seen this one, though. Dot painting? I haven't tried my hand at it, no. Okay. Okay, so the ribbon is glued right here at the end. Now what you're going to do is wrap the yarn around the ribbon twice. <laughs> Richard gives an obscure reference that yarn looks like the tube costume from Mum and Chance. And you know what? He's right. <laughs> Does anyone else out there know who Mum and Chance is? I remember that from an episode of The Muppet Show. Okay, so you do one. And that's that yay, the children are screaming and, and cheering because we just received a super chat from Lothar Bear Lamb. Here's a dollar fifty six American for your garden. Thank you so much. Thank you. Wow, thank you, Lothar. So Okay, so once you've got it in place, you go around it. You got it? Yeah. You go around it, around the ribbon twice. <laughs> At least I'm helping. Yeah, as best as you can. <laughs> but it's coming undone. So let me wind it some more. That poor Simba. <laughs> <laughs> He'll get over it. Okay, so twice over the ribbon. Then you move the ribbon out of the way. And you wrap it four, four. times. Harry, Outlaw Geek's got an interesting question. What would you knit with yarn like that? A uh, very, very heavy scarf. Scarf. I've seen people that have actually knitted sweaters out of this. It would make a very cozy sweater. Yeah. They must use very big knitting needles. They do. A lot of a lot of blankets are done with this type of yarn. Oh, I oh, can see that. Blankets. That makes sense. Yeah. And the needle sizes are usually... Salad. About the size of a broomstick. Yeah, a salad top. Or, or a pool cue. <laughs> so that's how many times? Two. Ben, and look at what Luther said. What's he Come on, people. Said. Let's see if you can beat my dollar fifty six American. <laughs> <laughs> and what you do is is you're wrap, wrapping it around, you just keep pushing it so that it's nice and full. So that's how many? Three? Three. <laughs> Lost count. <laughs> you guys are making me lose my mind, which that, tonight there's not much there to lose. No. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. You've got four there. And then? And then the ribbon comes back over. Give me the ribbon, please. Oh, my bad. <laughs> You have to wrap it twice, two twice. times again. Yep. <laughs> Out loud geek says knitting with yarn like that sounds like a recipe for carpal tunnel. Actually, no. The one that gives you carpal tunnel is the baby yarn. Is it yeah, because there's so much of it? Yeah, you have to work really, really hard in order to finish any project. And it's tiny stitches. Oh, yeah, I guess so. One. So it's again, so it's four, four times four, three. Times. Four under the yarn and two, two over. over. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and put it down and do a little bit of work here to where I can see what I'm actually doing. Okay. And then we can. Uh, can you point the camera down, Ben, so you can actually yeah. see the work? Great. Thank you. 
Suckle on your Diet Coke? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, we're super clean here. <laughs> Doug just cleaned up all the uh, booze from the floor over here. Not that it spilled. The bombs no, were just, just there on his little uh, floor mat. So, yeah, you know, Ben is saying that makes sense. Working with small things can be hard on your hands. Yeah, it is harder. Oh, wow. He has damage from diamond grading with tweezers. Ooh. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> wow. Very splintery. So it's hard. The hardest part is trying to keep this. This particular yarn is not staying together in the ball like other yarns do. So it, you've got a lot of fooling around with it. It looks like it's like Cheeto dust. You know, those puffy Cheeto things? Yeah, no, but it's, this is actually gold. So then the ribbon comes over again. <laughs> you can go over it twice. Lothar, inflation. I blame it on inflation. Sorry, guys, I tried. Oh, no. <laughs> no. We know all about inflation. No worries. <laughs> Supply chain issues. Benji says he used to grade at GIA. Wow. That would be interesting. What? Well, Sherry, it seems like you're getting it through there okay. I mean, but ben yeah, it just wind it up a bit. Ben's bored. He's on his phone. Ben? Uh, I, no, no. I, I'm sorry. Help Sherry out. Well, I was responding to a text that I got. So, so some, hold on a minute. Someone I, I chat with on a regular basis probably forgot that I was on the show tonight. Yeah, this, this particular yarn is very slippery. Yeah, Jean says it looks like the inside of your body or a large intestine. No, it's too small for a large intestine. Sorry. Okay, small intestine then. Maybe, maybe a giant gallstone. <laughs> oh, that would hurt. <laughs> Definitely. So what does it look like so far, Sherry? Okay. Okay, you're making good progress there. Kind of like a film strip. Yeah, that's kind of what it looks like. Just try and help me keep it together. Wow, I just had another sip of that cocktail from tonight. That is powerful. Kind of like latch hook, but not really latch hook. What, this? Yeah. Well, uh, not really. And you guys aren't doing it? No, we've been a little busy and preoccupied. <laughs> and it doesn't need to be wire edged ribbon, but I find that wire edged works a little bit better. Okay. Wendy's saying this craft's starting to feel more like a struggle than a craft. I'm, yeah. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> no, it's not. No, she says she's kidding. Yeah, definitely. But so. Um, it's great for someone who has Tourette's. <laughs> <laughs> Little twitchy right. things you kind of have those have to faff with your fingers. Does that well, that's like well, the kitchen's clean, oh, yeah, clean up this little... area. There's no garbage. Oh, wow, Sherry Jay says that this one is stressing her out. <laughs> oh, this, yeah, this is not good for people who have anxiety. Like, it but... no, it once you get it started, it's not a big deal. It's actually rather, it seems like it'd be rather relaxing to work on it when you're just no and then the it. ball rolls off the table and this gigantic line and then you start cursing and it's just not worth it <laughs> i could see that and then what a mess <laughs> but hey it's going pretty fast there this is like now that, four pearl two now that i've got ben actually doing something oh sh tug and pull tug and pull <laughs> oh wow ben those are some fighting words yeah i guess so oh god ben, that's another thing we can't wait benji you're so right says this makes me think of reloading the twine and the weed trimmer mm -hmm. yeah you know i do that all the time and uh, oh, yeah. Kind of. yeah i can see that 
Oh, I can't wait to get rid of those two pieces. The <laughs> trimmer and the lawnmower. Uh-huh. Will says it's reminding of a tapeworm. <laughs> I don't know much of tapeworm, so... <laughs> but it's fuzzier. Yeah, much. this is much fuzzier. Actually, you know, the color of it reminds me a little of Fozzie Bear. Yeah, it does. Oh, Fozzie, yeah. It is. It's very much like Fozzie. By the way, Richard says this is a fun craft. He's not bored with it at all. <laughs> well, that's good. It's actually kind of mesmerizing. Even me sitting here, I'm looking at this and going, wow, we're really coming really fast around See, the You ring. have to do like Food Network. You get it started, you do a little bit, you twine, yeah. and then you pull out a thing. Okay, now it's done. Let's gussy it up and put some... That's what happens on a taped YouTube show, but... Being that this is live, I'm sorry you guys have to endure well, my it, rapping. It's actually going very, very quickly. It's going quickly now. So Jean says it looks like Fozzie's intestines. <laughs> this is, it looks odd. I'm going to stop doing crafts with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> now this one actually is going really well. But then I've got a couple of things to show you that are options that can be done with this sort of thing, too. So Okay. Well, that's fine. Yeah. Ben just keeps winding it back up. Yeah, because it keeps falling apart. It is. It's, it's definitely falling apart. I mean, it not, the yarn itself isn't falling apart. It comes. The ball up, is yeah. really falling apart. It, yeah, this one, <laughs> I didn't realize it was going to be this difficult to work with. <laughs> Worm and twirm and measuring <laughs> the very golds. Is that Alice in Wonderland? No. 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 Hans Christian Andersen. Oh, he's super dead. So I don't know much about him. All I know is, all, is it he all over solving? Hans Christian Andersen? Yes, he is. Yes. Yes, he is all over solving. God, I love that town. Yeah, I, we have to go back. We need to go oh. on a field trip together. I think I need of Christian Anderson and I think of Danny Kay. Yeah, me too. Really? What is that? Yeah. I just think of him Danny, like Christmas. Danny Kay. Yeah. He did. Oh yeah, he. I'm Hans Christian Anderson. When I don't know the tune Bob of it. Though. With Danny Kay. Oh. oh. Christmas. Yeah. I thought that Not was... Bob Hope. Jump. Bing Crosby. Bing Crosby tap dance with Danny. You know it, Kay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Benji, I like White Christmas. Benji said that I remember when Kermit showed us Cookie Monster's intestines through the X-ray machine. <laughs> he referred Seriously? to Cookie Monster's internal organs as bits and pieces and odds and ends. That's <laughs> funny. <laughs> wow, we'll you're... be there soon, guys. We're wow, getting look there. At that. It's getting there. Look at that. But it's going, it's going quickly. Well, of course, the the ball of yarn is getting smaller too, so it's a little easier. And, to and it's a, a, like I said, it's the bulky, bulky yarn. You can do it with, you know, any weight yarn, but it would take a lot longer, and it would use a lot more yarn. And I'm not quite sure how it would work with. Um, and this is what size wreath? Twelve. This is a twelve inch wreath. I looked for a 10 inch, but couldn't find it. And I refused to work this on a, on a Dollar Tree 14 inch wreath. Oh my gosh. That, Those, that would be quite big and very long working. And the eight inch wreaths are a little too small for this type of work because it doesn't show as well. So 10 and 12 are your ideal wreaths. Yes. You know, Wendy, it's amazing. She says, this is turning out quite nice in spite of the struggle. That's how we have felt about the backyard. <laughs> Always about the backyard. That's all of our compass and lights. That's where it's just mentally. That just, is that is our life right that now. That is every lick and thing. Every waking moment. But as that. soon as it's done, we will celebrate. Oh. You know, what you have to do is just kind of work with the yarn. I mean, the, the ribbon as you go around to make it curve the way you want it to curve. Oh, yeah. You know what we should do is a live stream from the backyard once you're done with the backyard and we can do a barbecue and all that. 
Uh, How many times have Arnie said that to me? Would you guys, the twinnies? <laughs> Let's do a backyard live show. Yeah, uh, when, probably, when done, I would. Well, I'm uh, I'm slightly game for, but right now I just want to KM in. Yeah, it just needs to get finished. And let you guys enjoy it for a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. I just wanted before it's screaming hot and California burns to a crisp, but we can actually sit outside at night and just go. Just no. Ah. Oh my gosh. Paul is saying that it looks like the 151 is hitting Doug. Oh, yeah. I'm just kind of mellow. He is pretty mellow right now. I'm mellow. But I got everything clean. So as. As long as no one harshes his buzz, I think he'll be great. Now it's looking like intestines. Oh, no. It's all over the place. <laughs> it looks like a big Cheeto <laughs> noodle, like macaroni and cheese. The right way. It did, what do you mean it didn't wind the right way? I came this way instead of... I went under instead of over. How? Did, what? Okay. Never mind. See, this one, I had con gone this way, so it came apart instead oh. of... Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, like Wendy. <sighs> you like I'm working with an octopus here. Two, three, four. Ribbon over. Jerry, uh, Alika is watching right now. She says, is the ribbon on top of the yarn, or are you keeping it in on the wire frame? Your it's on top of the out. yarn. It's on top of the yarn. So like right here, I'll show you. I can't see. There it is. Oh, it is on top of the yarn there. It's on top of the yarn. So I'm going to put it over this way. And then I'm going to put the yarn over the ribbon. <laughs> Well, that must be the missus, not the mister. No, that's Will. The missus is at work. Oh, the missus is yeah. at work? So he says, Cary Grant and Danny Kay are my man crushes. Okay. <laughs> I'm sure Victoria would have something to say about that, though. Oh, I don't think she cares. <laughs> okay, I know so her. Then, well. So then the yarn is out of the way. Let me move over this way. So you Alika, can you're very welcome. By the way, welcome to the village. Thanks for watching. Yep. The yarn is pulled, I mean, the ribbon is pulled back. The yarn is going down. One. Two. Three. Well, you got to get the four. 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 Okay. Now the yarn comes, I mean, the ribbon comes back over. And I go over the ribbon twice. One. It looks like a giant cookie. Kind of. Oh, I'm enjoying the Oreo cakesters, by the way. Usually those things go to the office. We throw them away. We've been eating them all. I bet. They're delicious. Delicious. You know, my blood sugar dropped really low the other day, and I came down and got one of those to bring it back up. Oh, yeah, that would help. It did. Two. Three. <laughs> you got it. You got the, uh, the method down. Four. That's wild. Yarn. Are you gluing this to tie it off, or you? And then yeah, and then over the over the ribbon. And then two. Two over the ribbon, and that's gonna do it. Yeah. One. And two. And two. So let me cut. It's more hot glue, I imagine. Yeah, it is. Yeah, there's our confirmation, by the way. It's Will. <laughs> Here. Yeah. And then this, what I will do is I will bring this back over this way. I'm going to trim the ribbon here. That's going to look right. What? Oh, he says, don't interrupt a professional. I'm going to... 
Okay, now it looks like a bunny glue. <laughs> Kathy, I like her comment. By the time you get the hang of it, it's time to hang it up. <laughs> hmm. That's well stated. Very well stated, Kathy. But now, now we've got a, a yarn pumpkin here. And one. And two. Two. Now do you have to glue it the in the back, back? And glue it in the back. Wow. <laughs> this actually looks like shag carpet in here. Oh, it looks very donuty. <laughs> Like this takes us back to 1973. <laughs> and just put it down in place. Okay, and and trim it. And trim it. Okay, yeah, I'm glad you're doing the hot glue and not me. Downscale says it's fantastic. <laughs> you haven't put all the accoutrements on it yet. Can't see, can't see. I see an arm. Okay. So now let's let's move the pumpkin and the cakesters. The glue is still warm. <laughs> so this is what it looks like so far. And then what I'm going to do is go up to where... That's what it looks like. It looks like a stirring wheel. A big fuzzy stirring wheel. Uh, <laughs> Everybody go know, around the bus goes round and round. What <laughs> I like to do is I will put my bow and all of my goodies right over where I started and ended so that it... it oh, it'll, looks, it'll mask it. Yeah. And on this one, what I'm going to do is just use some leaves and some miniature pumpkins. And what I like about this is that you do not need to glue these things down. And I'll show you why. Let me just get my clippers. Ben, downscale says that's how steering wheels looked in the 70s. Yes, that is. I still see some like that. Yeah. You know, it's covered it, with macrame. If you were to have like little flags on here. It would look like an ornament from Epcot. <laughs> oh, don't get started. Oh, I miss Epcot so much. <laughs> it's a mess, but I miss it. Okay, Sherry's using her snips now. Because what you can do is you can just kind of guide it in between the yarn rather than having to glue things in place. Oh, that's a great idea because it will slide right underneath the yarn and stay there that way if you want to change things out you can i agree with michelle this is a beautiful project <laughs> Dan's go. i saw snips and heard hot glue i'm in <laughs> <laughs> and what i like about this is i've got some white yarn here that's a little bit narrower it's a smaller smaller gauge than what this gold is and i'm going to do this on another wreath and have it ready for christmas but i'm going to use it with where'd i put that other stuff that i showed you ben? Over i here. have no idea I, i'm i'm stuck over here on this side of the studio <laughs> bedroom it's a bedroom no, for right now, using, for all intents and purposes, it's a studio. I will be using this little this little sign in it. Okay, that's really cool. With the white, and then the ribbon I'm going to be using. Let me pull some of it out because the cellophane is hard to see. Is this ribbon? Oh, I like that. But because there are no Christmas picks out yet. <laughs> <laughs> this can be this can be made ahead of time and just left and then when the, when the different holiday picks do come out you can do exactly what I'm doing with this only with christmas only picks only with your christmas picks <laughs> so you don't have to do it all at one time hi kit so let me but she's really getting it in there well, and 
whoops, <laughs> I'm pulling the leaves off. Yeah, Sherry, did you hear Doug's comment about that Christmas ribbon? No. He said he didn't have enough pine cones. <laughs> well, I do have five yards of um, pine cone fabric for you, Doug. Ooh, I like that idea. Richard yep. says the wreath needs fairy lights. Oh, yeah. yeah I can use fairy lights. That'd be cute. Wendy is asking, are real snips even made anymore? Serious question. You mean like these? Yeah, they are. Yeah, they are. You can get them. I used to get mine at Sears all the time, but now they're gone. So, so you go to the Lowe's Depot. Yeah. All right. Are you to get rid of these ones? Because I'm not going to use those ones right now. Okay. Yeah, I'm with Richard. I, fairy lights would be a nice look on that wreath. No, oh, everything needs to light up. Yeah, fairy lights are a good idea on anything. Yeah, lighting up of things need on everything. Yep, I agree. I'd like everything to be lit. Now, Sherry, you are putting those in just by tucking them in, but you can use hot glue if you know. You can you use hot glue if you know for sure that that's what you're going to want to do. And they don't show on the back. Oh, they just tuck right inside. They just tuck right inside. Because it, there's so much yarn. And well, then yeah. I'm going to put some pumpkins. Oh, those are cute. But I'm going to take them apart because we're not going to use them all at one time. I would. Well, not <laughs> in one piece. I would. Yeah, you would. You would, Ben. <laughs> yeah, you would, Ben. Definitely. <laughs> and here's the thing. If you wanted it to be in a certain place, you can always poke a hole in the ribbon because it's not going to show once you put a bow on it. Oh, which is probably what I'm going to do right now because I want this to go in right here. So you have the point of your scissors and just poke a hole in the ribbon. See another dangerous aspect of this craft that I should not be doing. Scissors. Poking holes. Ben, it's kind of like brick. He I, may as well just be, I may as well just be running the hall, running down the hall with the scissors in my hand. <laughs> so how's it looking so far? Can you show the camera? Yeah, hold on a minute. Go faffing with it. Well, yeah, there's a lot to faff with. Oh, yeah. I don't want scissors. You know, it's looking really nice. No, is this okay. going to be the bottom or the top? The top. This is going to, okay. This is the... And then you have a big old bow. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is poke another hole in this piece of ribbon here. <laughs> As I back away. I'm not going <laughs> to poke you. <laughs> Sorry. Man, Ben, you're a drama queen. <laughs> Wendy says, thank you. In the 70s, we owned snips that operated like scissors. They were fierce, could cut anything, and our firefighter friends all had them. Yep. We had them in our junk drawer. Yep. Now this, I'm going to go ahead and glue down, just because I know I'm going to be leaving it here. Thank you, Gregory. We know that that is Greg of D&G Explorers. By the way, their show is Wednesday nights, 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. And I think I'm going to put the other three the other sets of three out the top but before i do that i'm going to put the ribbon in place okay or the bow okay i need to make sure that these are all nice and even okay where's, where's the ribbon is that it there no you took it over i did yeah didn't you oh this ribbon here yeah, there you go. The ribbon we used. Okay. Okay, okay she's going to be making a, a fake ribbon. No, this one I'm going to make a real one, but then I'm going to show you how to do a cheater one too. So what you can do with one-sided ribbon, and that I mean it's printed on one side and not the other. With glitter. Oh. 
I like to leave enough of a tail so that I can always trim if I want. So then you just make a loop and you're going to want to decide on here how big the loop you're going to want is. So I'm going to make it probably about a, about a four inch loop. So then what Got you do is. Got our measuring table right here in front of us. You take it. Just like Doug measuring out the backyard. Okay, oh, so I've... now you've got your one loop. Where your center is going to be, just scrunch it up. The ribbon in back, you twist it. No, not the... Yeah, you twist it. Okay, mm -hmm. Wendy's, Wendy's really paying attention to this because she wants to know how to make bows. Okay. Now you just bring it over in front. This is the this is a cheater bow. <laughs> so what you can do is you just start pinching it together in the center. All right. And just keep wrapping it back. Twist. <laughs> no twist on this one. The cheater bow. Okay. And then bring it over. Gather it. <laughs> wow. Bring it, bring it back behind again. Right side and back. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I got a headache and I'm here. <laughs> Gregory says I'm already lost. Just I, gather I, I know, it. right? And then just bring it over. So what it is, is just you're looping it over itself. You're not doing any twisting and just pinching it in the center. I feel like I've been looped over myself. I'm only going to do six loops on this one. So three on each side. Okay. Trim it. And a pipe cleaner. Good old pipe, pipe cleaner. cleaner. Yes. So I try and Jerry, Kathy's loop. asking to loop and pinch. Yes. Yep. Loop and pinch. And we all know how painful that can be. <laughs> And then put your pipe cleaner right around the center. And rather than twisting the pipe cleaner, hold it as close to the bow as you can and twist the bow. Because then you get a nice tight twist on it. Okay. And then you can just feed it. <laughs> yeah, only six. <laughs> Oh, you should see some of the ones I did that one Christmas with the, the bow maker. Oh, my gosh. All those beautiful glittered bows. A loop and pinch. That tugs a collar. And then that Loki says, loop and pinch. Is that like bend and snap? Oh, I love that. I love, that. love that movie. Oh. Bend and snap works every time. <laughs> so then what you can do is just find... find what the wire in the uh in the wreath itself in the wreath itself there she goes with those sharp scissors again well i have to get around the ribbon there we go it's okay to kind of mutilate it there in the center because it's gonna be covered anyway so yeah yeah, glitter is going to be all over. No, it's not. <laughs> you have that much glitter on it, Ben. Not much. It doesn't. It defined not much. Like it, I was going to say, don't question Sherry. <laughs> Who said that? Don't Down scale. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm having to teach my husband that lesson right now with recovering from surgery. Oh, my gosh. <sighs> yeah, that's true. He keeps saying that he's capable of doing things. And you know what? His body is telling him it's not. I think he got upset because the doctor finally responded to us and told him, no, you have to wait for at least four weeks before you drive. 
See, what, what Tom isn't taking into consideration is that when you drive, you have to turn your head around a lot in order to see where you're going and where you might hit or something. Well, and I proved my point yesterday with that because yeah. we were uh, we went to the store and I told him, I said, okay, can I turn right? <laughs> and he uh, kind of looked at me. Oh, don't pinch yourself. Looked over at the side and said, oh, I can't turn to see. There you go. And I said, told you. Okay, so I've got both ends through. I informed you thusly. Yeah, Sherry, Sherry's <laughs> favorite phrase. I told you. No, no, no I informed you thusly. I informed you thusly. I so <laughs> informed you thusly. Yeah, that's Doug's favorite phrase. And then just twist it. Snips again. Snips again. And then just tuck it in so you don't get. Oh, clever. Oh. That's clever. So then you can start fooling around with your bow. <laughs> Just faffing with it. What B they call B O W. What they call um <laughs> breaking the bow. Uh -huh. Which means just uh fooling around with it and getting it into the shape that you want. And then I will trim these edges at an angle and this is called dovetailing your ribbon why it's called that i don't know uh because it looks like a <coughs> dove tail. i have no idea i should have brought my big scissors down here but i didn't <laughs> All right. Well, let's see that result there. Okay, let's let's go ahead and pull up here because we are done with the crafting segment as far as Sherry's work goes. Sherry, and that looks really good. Done. And well done. To do a hanger, you can just uh, <laughs> do a loop on the back with a pipe cleaner. Just as just make sure you get the. Um, the center the scent no the the wire oh. of the frame yeah but i was gonna i was gonna show you guys something real quick and that is what i call a cheater bow where i take six pieces of ribbon and these ones i cut at eight inches this is very pretty and then dovetailed all of the ends on it and what you can do is just kind of layer them together and I like layering them a little bit at an angle every other one so it gives a staggered look to the ribbon yeah a little bit of a staggered look and these are great especially if you're going to be doing um like packages so then what you do is you you just kind of scrunch it all together right in the, in the middle of all of those pieces of ribbon take a pipe cleaner again with the pipe cleaner same oh, thing don't twist don't the twist pipe the pipe cleaner, cleaner twist the, the, the ribbon. ribbon and just twist it about three times so it's nice wow. and, tight. and then what you can do is you can just start pulling it apart on either side And then what I'll do with these ones is I will get something fun to put in the center, being that it doesn't have a knot in it like a lot of other other bows do, or it doesn't have the loops. So you can have like a big pin or a button or another piece of ribbon that ties around yeah, it. Yeah, you can get another piece of ribbon and tie it around it. But then they kind of just look like a starburst. Or a yarn spider. Or a ribbon spider. And you just fool around with it until you get it the way you like it. Sherry, Wendy says dovetailed all cut ribbon bow. New to me. Yeah. Michelle is very thankful for she has great tips. Yeah, and like I said, you can either cover it with another piece of, of ribbon, just tie the ribbon 
or uh, wrap it. Fold it. <laughs> I'm so tired, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> you fold it so it's about one fourth the size of the width and then just put it around and glue it in back and you've got a little cute flower ribbon flower for a uh package very or nice. or whatever you want to use it for but that's a cheater bow if you don't want to sit there and twist and pinch and i just use my bow maker and i know not everybody has one of those but that's what i use well thank you sherry thank you very much that's great hope you enjoyed it i did thank you give me time to clean up <laughs> i didn't watch any of that <laughs> went to the bathroom <laughs> cleaned up some dishes put away all thank you for thank you for sharing Doug. <laughs> ben what's coming up on etv this week for a life with ben well, along with this wreath or whatever, it kind of goes within our fall theme. I am going to be sharing a little bit of the decorating that's been going on at the villa. Yeah, at the villa. At the villa, yeah. Oh, yeah, because we're decorating for fall. Yeah, this coming Saturday, we're going to be decorating at starting. my house, starting the process. Are you really going to be prepared for us? We are. We're already almost, in the process. Almost there. Okay. Okay. So, uh, yeah, but this Doug, coming. I've got this, a job for you and me. I'm not done yet. Sorry. This coming. Oh. Through, <laughs> as long as I'm getting fed, and you guys know where the uh, place I need to go to. Yeah, this coming Thursday, you'll be seeing the episode of Arnie and Doug's place coming together for fall. That's Thursday morning at 10 a.m. Uh, Eastern, 7 a.m. Pacific. Wonderful. Only on PTV. Thank you. Oh my God, we're halfway through August. So yeah, no, we are yeah. lunch. Ah. Lunch and dinner will be Firehouse Subs and uh, Hunan. Our church is Chinese chicken. Our yeah, church is Chinese. 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 Yeah. Ah. Now, Doug, what, what I'm going to have you do while these guys are lighting the trees? Please, pretty please. I still have to order one. I'm going to get a exterior hard drive. And we finally took the old computer out of from behind the new one. <laughs> and it's sitting in the hallway in front of the linen closet. For those of you who are wondering oh, about so that. Oh, so I have to be IT? Yeah. Tom, and Tom and Sherry have a very large desk that sits in the corner. So Sherry had an old iMac that was pushed to the back to make way for a new iMac. And the old iMac has been sitting back there for, what, about a year and a half? Well, yeah, because I needed the new one when we went into lockdown for work. Oh, so um, about two years now. Yeah. Maybe a little over two years. I'm more interested in just, uh, I don't think there's many files that I need, but I do want all the pictures from that computer. Okay. Wendy, thank you so much for the, for the uh, comment. Really appreciate that. Why, We're looking forward to the backyard too. both are blue? Oh, he says, yes, very soon they'll have snow on the ground and it will be minus 40 uh, below. Indeed. I'm not, I'm not the 40 below, but I want a cold. I do too. I am so ready yeah. for cold weather. Well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm totally okay with it. Yeah. I don't mind the fall when it's kind of nice in the 70s, maybe even low 80s during the day. But then at night you get that crisp. Right. That I love crisp that. Exactly. And yeah. it's coming up soon. It's almost fall. It's coming. Is it too Yeah, but when it's fall here, that's when we start to really warm up and the state really starts to burn. Yeah. I'm putting we, more pumpkins in while you weeks guys. From we are nearly two Thursday. weeks to the burr months. Yeah. Yep. And that's, and that's pretty much when the forest starts coming together here at PTV. So, uh, We're only three weeks from Labor Day weekend. Yeah, I know. Really? I can't I believe it. Everyone get ready. Fall is coming. That means Christmas will be on the way as well. We'll be doing the countdown to Christmas starting the end of September, beginning of October, somewhere around there. And then you'll see Christmas crafts, Christmas cookies, and all sorts of other Christmas related content here on PTV Live. But we have to get through all the fall stuff first. Yes, yes. we do. We do. Can you guys make maple bars or something like that as a... As a... a fall type of treat i think we can do oh, that but also 
Just because y'all are lovely, as always, Wendy, for a $20 super chat. Thank you so much, Wendy. That's thank very you. kind of you. We really appreciate that. We also want to thank Lothar for the $2 oh, super chat so that he Wendy, sent yeah. as well. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Never expected, but always appreciated. Exactly. Everyone, thank, thank you. you so much for being here tonight. We've had a lot of fun with the craft. Sherry, great job. Oh, thank you. I'm I'm adding more pumpkins to <laughs> I'm not happy with just. The she's few not. I've she's got, not done. So. <laughs> Less is more. Blessing her wreath. Well, everyone, you'll see some things that happened this week during the moment of groovy here at the end of the show. So don't stick. You know, don't miss it. Stick around for the end of the show. You'll want to see it. Yeah, Doug hasn't watched it yet. So everyone, thank you so much for watching tonight. We really appreciate you joining our show. I'm Arnie. I'm Doug. I'm Ben. I'm Sherry. You've been watching PTV Live here on Pepper Tree Villa on YouTube. We'll be back next week at the same time, 9.30 Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. In the meantime, everyone, have a magical evening and have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. And now it's time for your moment of groovy. Good night, everyone. Good night. Ciao.